I became Fundy Trader with the Fundy Trader program around one year ago. After keeping their funded account for more than a year and trading that $500,000 funded account, I decided that now I am going to diversify my funded account portfolios. So I decided to take another challenge and I went with Bespoke Funding program this time. I did their $500,000 challenge, which had no time limit restriction. I completed the phase one of the evaluation. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I completed the phase one of the evaluation. What is the trading strategy that I am using to trade the account and what steps you can take if you are looking to become funded, not only with bespoke funding program, but with any other firm. Let's deep dive into today's video. So before I give you the overview of the trading strategy that I am using to pass the challenge with bespoke funding program, this is the dashboard of bespoke funding. As you can see, the first account that I did, it is $100,000 rapid challenge account of bespoke funding program. And in that $100,000 rapid challenge account, my objective was to make $8,000 overall profit by not losing more than $5,000, which is their daily drawdown and also overall $8,000, which is their 8% overall drawdown. So I completed the phase one and now I am on the phase two. And this is the inside look of my phase one classic challenge account of bespoke funding program. My objective was to make $32,000 by not losing $20,000, which is 5% in a day and overall 10%, which is $40,000 on the $400,000 account. So I hit the profit target objective. So how much time it took me to complete phase one of the $100,000 rapid challenge account and how much time it took me to complete phase one of the classic challenge $400,000 account. So if I just scroll down, you can see right now I have been upgraded to the phase two of the evaluation, but overall it took me 10 trading days. As you can see, the number of trading days here are 10. The first trading day I started trading on 6th of July on this $400,000 account. The first day I made $5,800. The second day I lost around $13,400 because I literally over traded a lot on this day. On the third trading day, I pretty much made more than $5,300. On the fourth day of trading this $400,000 phase one evaluation, I made $9,670. Fifth trading day, I lost around $4,600. And then after that, all remaining five days, they are profitable. $3,500 in one day, $5,500 in one day, $13,000 in one day, $4,092 here. And the last trading day, when I hit the 8% profit target objective, it was $3,071. So overall, out of 10 trading days, I made profits in eight days and I lost in two days. Mostly I was only trading US 30 and NASDAQ when I was doing the challenge. At the same time, I was trading my funded account that I have with the funded trader program, which is a $500,000 funded account. I was also trading Forex pairs and also gold. The reason why I was only trading US 30 and NASDAQ on phase one of the evaluation with bespoke funding, because I was testing one trading strategy for some time on US 30 and it started to work very well. So I wanted to check this when I was going to live trade. So when I was doing the live trading, when I was trying to complete the evaluation, I was using that same strategy and I'm also going to show you that strategy in this video. So as I just showed you $100,000 phase one account, I traded for around 17 days on this account. It took me some time because I first started trading on a $100,000 rapid challenge account. And after some time, I also bought a $400,000 classic challenge account with bespoke funding. So I started this account on 24th of April, but that's only after getting the account, I only placed these two trades on 24th of April and 18th of May just to keep this account because they have this restriction that you have to at least place a trade within 30 calendar days. So I was just doing that. Then I started trading on 23rd of May. I made only $74. Then again, these two trades that I did, they were just to make sure that my account stays active. After that, on 30th of June, I placed some of the trades. I made $488. On 3rd of July, I made $1,039. Then there was a losing day of $340. Then the next day after that, I made around $2,097, then $1,692. Then there was a big, big losing day for me where I lost around 3% in one single day. But I was able to recover that because after that, most of the days were again profitable. $2,188 on 12th of July, then a loss of $1,300 on 13th of July, then $796 profit on 14th of July. Then on 17th of July, I made like $1,500. Then on the last trading day, 
I made around $2,390. What is my trading strategy that I was using to trade on US 30 and NASDAQ to complete phase one of the evaluation of bespoke funding program? So the way I have been trading this strategy on US 30 and NASDAQ is that once the market is either going for the upside or for the downside, in this example right here, it was going for the upside. It was making higher high, high low, then higher high, high low, higher high, higher low. Then right after we made this higher high, look what market did. It dropped significantly. When it dropped, I was on the 30 minute time frame. I was doing this analysis on 30 minute time frame. After seeing this strong, strong market movement from the sellers, I went down to 15 minute time frame. And on the 15 minute time frame, we can see this was the market structure. Sellers just dropped significantly. So I knew that this is the price level which is going to be impacting a lot as the price dropped from this level. So I knew this can play a significant role in again reversing the market to the downside. So I just drew the line here and I started waiting for the market to come back to this level to retest it but it should be coming in a proper pullback movement or a correction movement. Now, what is a correction movement? Let's just say that you see an impulsive movement to the downside as we have the impulsive movement on 30 minute and on 15 minute time frame. Now the correction is going to be that when buyers will start to go up back to this level, they should be going up in this kind of a structure. They should be making small higher high, higher low sequence and they need to come up with proper struggling movement that will confirm us that yes, the buyers who are coming up have no strength in their overall movement. And once we start to see a rejection after this whole correction movement or also a pullback, and we are already at the level from where the price dropped, then I go down to three minute or five minute time frame to wait for the trade opportunity. So here you can see when market started to come back to the level from where the price dropped, what kind of a market structure we were having. We were coming up in a proper struggling movement. We were making high, high, miniature higher low, then again higher high, higher low, then again small higher high, higher low, then we tried to cross this area, we tried to went higher than this but we failed and the second we failed, look what kind of the rejections we are getting. At this time, I simply just go down to either 3 minute time frame or on 5 minute time frame, it depends which time frame you prefer. I prefer to trade mostly on the 3 minute time frame, so if we just go down to 3 minute, that's the market structure. Right after this rejection at that significant level, buyers did try to come up again. And as soon as we started to have these type of rejections, buyers getting rejection again and again and again, then you can simply just put the trade, place your stops above the rejected area from where we previously properly got rejected at that significant price level, which made the overall movement to the down. And we can at least target one ratio three. So if we just target one ratio three, that's the movement that we usually get. So this is my overall concept on how I trade. Now, if you noticed when I was showing you the dashboard, there were 17 positions, there were 18 positions, there were 10 positions, there were 15 positions. They are the positions that I take, but they were mostly one or two trades every single day. So basically I was, what I was doing, I was placing several positions at this area and I was closing them when market was reaching either this spot area, then this spot area, but I was completely closing the trade at least after one ratio three, if it was going to one ratio three. Now it's a simple breakdown of the trading strategy that I was using. I will tell you one thing that this never happens overnight. It took me a lot of research, a lot of time to understand how the market structure is working on US 30 and also on NASDAQ. It took me some time to develop this trading strategy. I will never say to you that just learn this strategy and you will be profitable overnight because nothing is granted and that's never going to happen. So that was my trading strategy that I use. Now what about my risk management? As now we have no time limit restriction, we can take whatever time we want to complete phase one and phase two of the evaluation and then move on to the funded account. So what I usually do, I try to not exceed 1% risk on every single trade that I'm taking. Now overall I can take 10 positions, but all the 10 positions collectively will not be exceeding 1% overall risk. If I really see a great, great trade opportunity that has a big, big potential to be a large winner, then and only then I risk around 1.5% on the trade. Before we had no time limit funding model, I literally used to risk 1% on my first trade. I was targeting three rewards from every single trade that I was taking. So if I am up 3%, then on my second trade, I was risking the profits that I made from first trade, which is called asymmetric compounding. 
I was risking 3% on the second trade and if my second trade is also profitable that means I have met the profit target objective on phase 1. But on phase 2 I was just risking maximum 1% during the challenge and that's what I'm doing right now as we have no time limit restriction. So that's how I completed phase 1 of my $500,000 evaluation with bespoke funding program. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about bespoke funding? What do you think about their funding models? I also did a review on them which you can check on my channel and that's it from this video. I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.